This is section 13.7, Trigonometric Addition Formulas. Today we're going to use the formulas for sine and cosine of a sum or difference to solve some problems. So today's material is not that long. You just have to memorize four equations. If we wanted to find the sine of 75 degrees, we could use a calculator, calculator to get an approximate amount. But we could also express it like this to get an exact amount. So we can also say that the sine of 75 degrees is equal to the sine of 45 plus 30 degrees, which notice is 75. Well, how do we do that? Well, we can use the trigonometric addition and subtraction formulas. There are four of them, and they're listed on page 641 of your book, which I'm reproducing here. First, the sine of a plus b, or alpha plus beta, is equal to sine alpha cosine beta plus cosine alpha sine beta. So, sine of a plus b equals sine a cosine b plus cosine a sine b. Next, we have this difference. Sine of a minus b equals sine a cosine b minus cosine a sine b. Notice that for the sine addition and subtraction formulas, you have a sine a cosine b, cosine a sine b pattern, and the sine matches the sine here. Next, we have the cosine of a plus b is equal to the cosine a cosine b minus sine a sine b. Lastly, we have cosine a minus b equals cosine a cosine b plus sine a sine b. Notice the pattern for cosine sum and difference formulas. We have cosine a cosine b first, sine a sine b second, and the sine here differs from the sine here. So, all I can say is you have to do your best to memorize these. There's really no other way. You have to memorize the patterns here. And if you get enough practice, put, make some flashcards, you'll get the hang of it pretty quickly. That's pretty much it in terms of the material. Let's put them to work. An easy mistake, however, is to not do this. Do not assume sine of a plus b equals sine a plus sine b. This is not true. Sine a plus b is sine a cosine b plus cosine a sine b. So be very careful that you don't make this mistake. Now I know some of you guys are going to forget and still do this on your homework or on a test. I guarantee it. I almost would stake my life on it because it's an easy mistake to make. But tr please be very, very careful to not do this. You cannot distribute sine like you would if it were a distributive property in algebra. Example 1a. Find the exact value of cosine of 75 degrees. All right, so for most of these examples, especially the first three, you need to find a combination of two numbers to which you know the cosine and sine of that add up or subtract to the number here. So we already did one with sine. You can do the same with cosine. The cosine of 75 is equal to the cosine of 45 plus 30. Well, we know the cosine and sine of the 45 and 30 degree angles, so let's use the formula. Cosine of a plus b equals cosine a cosine b minus sine a sine b. So cosine 45 cosine 30 minus sine 45 sine 30. Now you just have to plug in the values. Cosine of 45 is radical 2 over 2. Cosine of 30 is root 3 over 2 minus root 2 over 2 times 1 half. Make sure you remember the order of operations. So multiply these two together, multiply these two together, and then subtract them. So you have radical 6 over 4 minus radical 2 over 4. Combine them over one denominator, and your answer to number 1a is radical 6 minus radical 2 over 4. So you notice the way you do this. You find two numbers to which you know the sine and cosine of, and you make a 75 into a sum or difference of those two numbers. 1b, find the exact value of sine of 105 degrees. See if you can find two numbers to which you know the angle and then that add up to 105. And then use the proper formula to finish the problem. All right, so the sine of 105 is sine of 60 plus 45. If you've gotten this far and needed to look at the answer, now see if you can plug in the correct formula to get the correct response. All right, so it's sine A cosine B plus cosine A sine B for the addition formula for sine. So sine 60 cosine 45 plus cosine 60 sine 45. And again, you'll need to know these values to plug into the equation. So 
Sine 60 is radical 3 over 2. Cosine 45 is root 2 over 2. Cosine of 60 is a half. Sine 45 is radical 2 over 2. Put those together and add them up, and the answer is radical 6 plus radical 2 all over 4. So again, you find two angles to which you know the sines and cosines of. Add them or subtract them to make the number here. Go ahead and try 1C. See if you can find cosine of 255. All right. Cosine of 255 can be expressed as cosine of 210 plus 45. Remember, you can calculate the cosine or sine of any multiple of 30 degrees. You just have to find out which quadrants it's, it's in and the reference angle. So the cosine of 210 plus 45, which means you're going to do cosine A, cosine B minus sine A, sine B. So cosine 210, cosine 45 minus sine 210, sine 45. Since 210 degrees is in the third quadrant, both cosine and sine here will be negative. So negative root 3 over 2 times root 2 over 2 minus the quantity, negative 1 half times root 2 over 2. 210 degrees means a reference angle of 30, and you have to put in the correct values for the cosine of 30, negative, negative sine 30. So put those together, and you see a pattern with the root 6s and the root 2s. This one gets you root 6 over 4, negative root 6 over 4 plus root 2 over 4, and you end up with radical 2 minus radical 6 all over 4. So for examples 1a through c, you simply find two angles. Look for a multiple of 30 and a multiple of 45 that you can add up to to make the total angle that you want to find the, ang uh, the cosine of. Example 1d, find the exact value of sine 160 cosine 20 plus cosine 160 sine 20. So now you're going backwards. You need to figure out which addition or difference formula you would use here and then combine those 160 and 20 degree angles to figure out the answer. See if you can figure out which formula you use. Well, since your pattern here is sine A cosine B cosine A sine B, you are going to use the sine addition formula. So this is equal to the sine of 160 plus 20. Now you just add up the angles inside the parentheses which means this is sine of 180, which is 0. So for examples 1d, e, and f, you're going to use the f expression they give you, try to plug in the correct sum or difference formula, and then solve the problem. 1e, find the exact value of sine pi over 10, sine pi over 10, plus cosine pi over 10, cosine pi over 10. See if you can do this one. All right, this is the cosine subtraction formula, if you switch the order of these two, you'll see a cosine A cosine B plus sine A sine B, which is the pattern for a cosine of A minus B. So you have cosine of pi over 10 minus pi over 10, which is the cosine of 0 degrees, or 0 radians, either way, and cosine of 0 is 1. Now if you think about it, this makes sense, because this is equal to sine squared pi over 10 plus cosine squared pi over 10, and based on the last lesson, you should know that that equals 1. Lastly, 1f. Find the exact value of cosine of 3 pi over 4 cosine pi over 12 minus sine 3 pi over 4 sine pi over 12. Pick the correct formula, solve the problem. There are radians here, not degrees. All right, again, we have a cosine a cosine b minus sine a sine b pattern, which is a cosine of a plus b addition formula. So. This is equal to the cosine of 3 pi over 4 plus pi over 12. Let's add the fractions together. And you get the cosine of 10 pi over 12, which is equal to the cosine of 5 pi over 6. If you want to convert that to degrees, that's 150 degrees. And that gives you a reference angle of 30 degrees and a cosine of negative root 3 over 2 because we're in the second quadrant. So if you still need to convert radians to degrees, you can kind of do that on your own paper. But the key to this problem is to identify the correct formula you use to convert this to a simpler expression where you can add up the two components and solve the problem. Finally, example two, we are still doing proofs. Now you get to prove the identity sine pi over 2 minus x equals cosine x. So over the next few sections, we're going to continue to add layers to doing proofs. We're going to add addition and difference formulas today. Tomorrow we're going to add other properties, double angle, half angle formulas, and eventually tangent problems. So 
we have the sine of pi over 2 minus x, and you want to prove that equals cosine x. Remember with proofs, you can only work one side of the equal sign. So let's work with this. Based on what we know today, you're going to have to use the difference formula for the sine. Try to make this proof go. So sine of a minus b is equal to sine of a cosine b minus cosine a sine b. So you can express this sine pi over 2 minus x as follows. Now, let's plug in what sine pi over 2 and cosine pi over 2 are. Sine of pi over 2 is 1. Cosine of pi over 2, which is 90 degrees, is 0. So you get 1 times cosine x minus 0 sine x. That disappears, and you're left with cosine x. So you can still do proofs. You're going to be using the cosine and sine addition and difference formulas to execute them. That's it for section 13.7. If you have any questions, you can ask me in class or post a message through email or Facebook.